But again, I went to United at the right time. You know, looking back, you know, they just won the league, went into a brilliant dressing room, great characters, um, huge expectation, huge pressure. But I, I suppose I loved United the day I walked in there. Just loved it, settling pretty quickly. Again, brilliant, brilliant dressing room, great characters. Roy, Roy you mentioned uh, Alex Ferguson there. And listen, it's been well documented. Yeah. The fallout that that's life that happens. Yeah. But could, could you give us a bit of insight into actually your relationship in those years you're talking about? You're the captain, he's that manager. That relationship when you're going for 99, you're going for leagues. Was it just a manager player relationship Definitely or was it a bit more because of no, captain? No, I don't think it was. And, and I think we kept it that way. I remember when I first went to United and we trained at the, the cliff. And um, I know some of the senior players would go upstairs and almost have a cup of tea with Alex Ferguson and some of the other coaching staff. Rob would be up there, Brucey, Pally, and they'd be all having a chit chat. I never wanted that relationship with any manager I walked under. I never wanted to have a cup of tea and a bit of chit chat. So when I did become the manager, I think our, um, our relationship was. If I want to analyse it, I think we really both loved and wanted to do what was best for Man United. And there was huge respect between us. Unfortunately, that was probably lost at the end. But ultimately, I look back at my time working for Alex Ferguson, and he was a brilliant manager, absolutely brilliant, and very, very good to me. There's no getting away from that. And it doesn't kind of take away from my career at United. 12 and a half years was fantastic. Yeah, as you said, these things happen towards the end. But um, I was never this, I never felt I was in with Alex Ferguson or I was, because I was captain where, you know, pals never, I always kept it pure, kind of professional and, and this idea of having a cup of tea upstairs in the canteen and a, a biscuit, not for me. Were you, were you similar personalities, you think? Um, I don't know, I, no, I, I just think we both, um, I think we both, obviously we, we love winning, we, we both wanted the best for Man United. Um, I know he was critical towards me at the end, almost saying I was running the dressing room and but I, I was. <laughs> Senior players run the dressing room because, as you know, at club level, managers are very rarely in the dressing room, at, uh, at the training ground particularly. And you ask any of the senior players. When I was a Forest, Stuart Pierce, Des, Des would organise it. When I first went to Man United, Robbo, Brucey, Eric, they'd be organising stuff, they'd be running it. Senior players ultimately run the dressing room. So I, that kind of role fell on me as I was getting older, of course. And I was playing more games and there'd be gigs would be there and Gary and we'd be discussing all sorts as senior players, and I'm talking about trivia stuff like the players' pool, Christmas functions, tickets for matches. So I, that, that all just you know, came into my, um, was part of my role. But I, I still don't think I ever kind of crossed that line with anybody where I felt I was kind of more important than the other players or I, was, I would question anything at the club. No, no, I was there to try and obviously help people, drive people on. Did I make mistakes and get a few calls wrong? Probably, yeah. But I also like to think I've got a few things right in terms of trying to help players, motivate them, train properly, etc. The whole things that you're supposed to do anyway. Did you feel it was your job to discipline the others as well? No, I, I, I wouldn't go that far. No, but I, I think part of my job of any senior player at the club, and you, you don't have to be a captain to try and do that. It was just as a senior player, you would have to try and set good examples. Uh, and what people probably would be critical of me when I was a player, a lot of people would say, and I hear a lot of players saying, but their stories, a lot are exaggerated. I was very hard on them and we used to train properly and I'd expected people to be on time and, and, and we'd give it all for the club. And, um, and I thought, yeah, that's what I was supposed to do. But, but I wasn't necessarily there to, I, I, I was there to win at Man United. I wasn't there to be pals with everybody. I wasn't great one for speeches. I tried to lead by example. And a lot of my, I suppose my talks, if I was ever given to the, the players, would be before games and it'd be something trivial. I remember there'd be certain games you go, hey lads, remember who we are, we're Man United, you know, let's, don't forget that, let's, we're here to win. And, and that would be it. I, I, I never felt my role was more important than what it was, but I knew I had to train properly, I had to try and drive people on, keep people focused, don't be distracted by off the field stuff. And that's, that's what I used to try and pass on to players. Was that then part of the, the genius uh, of Sir Alex Ferguson? Uh, we hear a lot about the hairdryer, but was it with him a case of saying the right things at the right time? Dead right. I have to say, I think, I think the, the, the brilliance between an Alex Ferguson and Brian Clough, you'd be in a situation, message went before the game, half time, pre I always felt they said the right thing at the right time, just what the team needed, just what a player needed. And you just go, I'd be sitting there, and I, as I was getting older, I'd be analysing and going, what, where are they going to come, what, what do I think the players might need? And they would always get it spot on. They'd always say the right thing. You go, ah, it's brilliant, brilliant what they've just said there. 
you know about the hair dryer treatment. I never really had the hair dryer for a performance. You might give me a hair dryer for an off the field incident, but the worst thing that ever, I always felt, you know, that the players had used respect, Alex Ferguson. You didn't want to let him down. Ultimately, you wanted to go and give your all. He said to me one day we were playing a game, and I was really poor. I, I, I might have been Aston Villa at home. And I was really bad, and he came in at half time. You're on about hair dryer. Forget the hair dryer. He just looked at me and went, "Right." And he, the disappointment in his face. I remember going. It was like a dagger in your heart, you know, I'm letting this man down here and I'm letting my club down. So these were, it wasn't always about the hairdryer. Again, these things, these stories can grow legs. Sometimes it was that look, you're going, you know, come on. So that's why I thought them two managers in particular were brilliant.